Hey everybody, tonight I want to talk a little bit about halter breaking. So this is a part that's maybe not the most glamorous, um, but it's really important, especially when cattle, and if you want to pan over and show them the size of these cattle, um, we've got anywhere from five to 600 pounders here, and it's really important to start breaking your calf to tie and to lead when they're about this age. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, a couple things we like to do is really seamless. Um, we don't like to fight them. We want them to have a good experience. So the first couple times that we bring them up into the round in the barn, going back and forth, they might be spinning around a little bit and looking at us, but it gives them an opportunity to just be around us, be a little closer to us and see what it's all about. After a couple days of that, we'll actually put, either put them in a chute or we'll just put them in an alleyway and put a halter on them. And we let them in here loose and just let them have that halter. They're gonna step on it a little bit. They're gonna have that feeling of, of that tension on their halter and it's gonna be a little foreign to them. So again, we'll do that a couple days. And then we will, when they've kind of got that down and they've settled down a little bit, we're going to tie them. Now, when we first tie a calf up, and these have been tied up several times, they're not really broke to lead yet, but we'll tie them about this level right here. So we're gonna tie this calf about right here. I like to make a loop over each side. So that way, a lot of times they pull back a lot and it'll make it where it doesn't make your knot super, super tight. So we're gonna tie them like this. What this does is a lot of times they'll like flop around back and forth when you first tie them up. And if they do go down, at least they're not choking themselves off or they're hurting their neck or their head. They're able to go down and lay down or flop to their side without hurting themselves. So a lot of times we'll tie them to either here or here for a few days and kind of let them get used to that. Now we're going to take these out. Um, we like to tie them for two, three, four, five hours a day, not much longer than that. Um, again, we don't want to just stress them, wear them out. So we're going to tie them up like this for a few days. Then we'll kind of work their way up where we can tie them with their head up where they get used to that where they're fighting it. So just make it a seamless process. We're going to take it step by step each day. Now real quick while we're still in here, I want you to kind of notice this is what we call a breaking halter. And it's got an eyelet and it allows this to, to go up and down, kind of telescope up that halter. Where on this calf over here, we've got a traditional halter. I don't know if Taylor, can you see that? Yeah. So this, is, this one doesn't telescope up and down. It's kind of tight around their nose. And that's real important. We're gonna discuss that here in a second. I'm gonna bring my, my man over here, Dustin Burkhalter. I'm proud of this guy. He's helped us um, all spring here break these, these fallborns. I'm gonna have you bring this calf out real quick. Now I'll talk about a few things on that halter. So when we're breaking cattle, I really like to practice leading them in that small pen where we're at. So once you get them where they're not fighting that halter much, I like to just lead them in that pen. I'm gonna help him fall this one out. So we would have started leading that calf in that pen right there. The reason I like to do it in a smaller pen is if that calf were to try and get away from you, and if he were to get away from you, just hold him right there, Dustin. If he were to get away from you in that pen, he doesn't feel like he got real far away from you because you're super close to that calf still. If you're out in an acre pen and that calf gets away from you and, and runs off, he's in his mind, he knows he's kind of gotten away from you. So we like to start them where we'll just lead them around in that pen. The other thing I like about that pen is that calf, it's big enough where that calf can get away from you if he, if he starts to get scared and, and where you can get up on the fence and get away from him and the calf can get away from you so nobody gets hurt. Because when you're breaking calves, um, those are five, six, seven hundred pounders, and so they weigh a lot more than you. And so um, just make sure that you keep that in mind, some of the safety things. The next thing we like to do is after we feel comfortable where they're kind of following us around in that pen, we like to bring them out into this pen. Now I want to take a step back because I did forget something. When we first bring them up, we'll put them in those pens and when we just let them hang out in there, we'll actually take some stuff um, and I actually got a broom and then we, we just take a scrub brush and we, this is, this is a prototype, this isn't actually on the market yet, 
we, we just we just taped this um, scrub brush on a show stick and I think it's real important again these cattle are just loose in here and we just kind of love on them we just scratch on them get them to the point where they kind of like that we probably stay away from their tail head where we're not rubbing hair out but they just get to where they kind of like that and they get to where you can they, they kind of enjoy the process instead of feeling like you're trying to tame the beast you just want to you don't want to conquer them you just want to build a relationship with them and I think by doing this you kind of ease that process where it's a lot less stressful on you and the calf so I like to use that if you don't have something like that even just a broom will work where you can just get in there somewhere where you can really make them feel good where it just feels good and that really helps that process so again that's a good thing to do when you're trying to get those cattle just used to being around you so when it comes time to leading and th this halter that I'm, I'm going to show you here the reason this is so important is for a couple reasons this will save a lot of time and a lot of stress on that calf it's going to save a lot of stress on you what happens is when I pull forward on this calf he comes to me and then it lets the tension off of that nose where on a traditional halter it's just going to keep, keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter so it's intuitive to that calf that when he comes forward it feels that pressure goes away the other thing that happens is when you tie this calf up this and they pull back this is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter on a traditional halter where it'll loosen back up as they loosen up so a lot of times what you'll see here is their chins will get really swollen from pulling back on that halter and with this halter they don't get as swollen what happens is when you get a, a calf with a swollen jaw you can't hardly be around it it hurts hurts them so bad you almost have to take a few days or a week off to let that jaw heal from that rope burn and um, so this this halter right here is going to keep that from happening I'm going to give you this back Dustin and I just want to show you what happens real quick give me a second here so on a traditional halter I just want to grab one here so for instance on this purple halter if we had this on this calf and I'm just going to put this on over top of it When you have this halter, and if you'll back up there, Dustin, when, you, when this calf pulls, this just keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter. There's no give when you let go. Where this one has that give, and that's really important. I know that seems like a little thing, but that'll save you a lot of time and stress. So to, to kind of finish up here, and I'll let you take that black halter. To finish up here, um, what we like to do is, again, we're going to practice leading this calf in that little pen. We're going to move to this bigger pen. And if you can kind of pan there for us, Taylor, I want him to see this whole pen is enclosed. It's not a very big pen, but if that calf were to get away, it doesn't really get the feeling that it got away. And then what we'll do is we'll just gradually, as we feel more comfortable that that calf's leading a lot better, we'll move to a bigger pen outside. We might even move to their outside pen. The other thing I like to do that works really good to get cattle where they'll follow you and lead well is we lead them to their bunk at night. If you practice every night leading them from their pen to their bunk where they can eat right after, a lot of times we'll have their feed sitting there waiting for them, then they know that there's a little bit of a reward there at the end. Um, real quick, I think it's two to summarize. I think that halter is really important. I think it's important to let them have a good experience um, where we're not just bringing them in, tying them up, and letting them fight it out. It's a lot easier on you and the calf. The other thing is when you're practicing leading one, make sure you have somebody, another calf there, and somebody to follow. Because a lot of times when you're pulling on this calf, they're just going to pull and pull back on you. And it's good to have somebody here just to follow that calf. What happens a lot of times, and if you just want to swing them back to me, here, Dustin. A lot of times when it comes time to breaking, we just get up here and we just pull and pull and pull and pull and pull. If you just put a little pressure on their head and have somebody following them, because if I just sit here and pull and pull, they're going to pull back. 
and you can tell sometimes when a calf just will not move and you're pulling and pulling if you'll let off of that head and let them have their head because a lot of times when you get pressure on that head they just lock up if you let go of that a little bit and let somebody push them then they'll go again and so um, a lot of times that person following them is more important than the person leading them. The other thing I tell you is when you first start leading, don't get up here right on their head. Give them a little bit of space so if they can shake their head where you're not fighting them back. So just give them a little head where you're not right down their eye. The other thing I tell you is to have your hand like this instead of like this. You've got more control. If he goes to kind of take off on you, you can kind of spin back and pull back on that halter easier than this way. So um, that's a little bit on breaking cattle. Um, I appreciate everybody's input. We've had a lot of comments on these videos. If there's something you'd like to see in a little more detail, just put it in the comments. We'd love to cover some of those top topics. I'm headed in the morning. I leave for Georgia. If you're in that area um, down there in the the southeast part of the United States. We're gonna have a clinic. Um, it's gonna be Saturday, this Saturday and Sunday in Douglas, Georgia. We'd be glad to see you there. Uh, Maddie wants to know where you can purchase the black halter from. So we'll put a link. We're gonna have two links in the comments. We'll have a link for the Weaver Leather Livestock website, and it'll be a direct link to that. Uh, it's called the Breaking Halter. And we'll have a direct link to that as well we're going to put we have a web or a facebook page called jg cattle and coaching and we might start doing some of these live feeds and other videos from that page we'll put that link in the comments as well we'd be glad if you all would go like both weaver leather livestock page and jg cattle and coaching page